Well, good morning, everyone. Basically, today what we're going to talk about is, is math and language and kind of the intersection, how to develop both. So the overview uh, is a big Venn diagram, and we're going to start with uh, equity. I know you've, you've talked a lot about equity, and uh, we're going to think about how can what um, we do in terms of interactions and in supporting students, how can it foster equity uh, in the classroom? And then number two is how can we foster mathematical reasoning? I, I also saw a lot of that in the rooms uh, that, that I visited. How can we do better at that? How can we get kids to uh, use their reasoning and, and develop their reasoning as they are solving math problems and doing uh, the tasks in the classroom? And then um, this is something I've been working on for many years, and that's developing oral language and conversation skills. We won't have time today to get into the full-on back and forth conversations, but we're gonna uh, do pre-conversation activities, a couple. Uh, some of you are familiar with the, the term MLR, math language routines, and um, we're gonna do a couple of those right now, uh, this morning, and they are meant to develop students' abilities to articulate uh, and, and to think about the math. And then um, <clears throat> this other dimension, these four dimensions, is authentic communication. And this is probably the biggest uh, challenge. And that's how do we get kids to want to say that second sentence because they want to communicate to someone else? How do we get them not just, not just to do the, okay, this is what I gotta do in math, I gotta solve the problem with as little thinking and a little uh, talking as possible. We want, them, we want it to be the opposite. We want them to uh, be able to clearly articulate their reasoning, to clearly articulate their uh, justification for procedures in their problems, and we, we want them to want to both, and this is not just talking, I, I will emphasize the, the, the oral language today, but we want them to authentically want to read a, a, a problem, uh, authentically want to write about a problem, right? Re so we want them to authentically communicate. And then in the middle, <clears throat> like I said, is you know, how do we get our instruction in the middle here, in the intersection of all these four things? And I will, the two activities we're gonna do today are strong, um, information gap cards, and stronger and clearer each time activity. And they're, they're doable in here. We do have quite a few people, but they are doable. And they're fun. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, because it's too late to change it. <laughs> um, in terms of equity, and this is somewhat of a recap of what you've uh, been doing, but I want to emphasize the idea of collaboration. So it's creating, supporting, and scaffolding opportunities for collaboration. We'll emphasize the collaboration today. That amplifies academic language. And sometimes people say academic uses of language uh, because there isn't just a set, okay, here's academic language in a, nut, in a nutshell. Uh, encourages all voices to be heard. Fosters academic English while also making the classroom a safe space for students to use variants of English and languages other than English. And I, and I think we, you know, you've pretty well covered that in the last three days, but I want to emphasize that this morning. And finally, views all student knowledge and language as assets. And so a question, I'm just going to pose it to you right now in, in kind of a, a little quick pair share, is how can interactions and conversations, let's say high quality interactions and high quality conversations between students foster equity? How can, the, how can what we're going to work on this morning, uh, how can that foster equity? And I know you don't know, have all the, and that's one of the questions that you can start off building up you know, your initial idea and then at the end, I probably won't have time, but I could ask this question again, and hopefully that your, your answers would be longer, okay? So go ahead, share with a partner, how can um, actually having kids talk with one another and interact with one another uh, foster equity? Go, I'll give you about a minute. So it gives, gives, um, gives students a voice, and sometimes it's easier to hear things and understand things better from, from peers than from the teacher. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's a reinforcement, and, and the idea of giving them voice means having a little more ownership, right, over the ideas rather than just, okay, we're gonna dump this into you and we gotta get your test scores back out of you, right? This is like, you're, you're, you're owning the learning. And a lot of times the, it, it takes conversation and interaction to do that. Um, and so hopefully, and, you know, I, I know there's a, a lot more, but hopefully that kind of idea will keep building in our heads during the next hour or so, all right? Now, now, in terms of mathematical reasoning, I, this is somewhat of a, a review for all of you. First of all, I'm going to present the, um, the standards of mathematical practice uh, in a different order than you're used to. Uh, for, for I'll, I'll tell you in a minute why. But um, 
you know all these, right? Reason abstractly, construct viable arguments, critique the reasoning of others, model with mathematics, look for and make use of structure, look for and express regularity in repeated, um, in repeated reasoning. And they make sense of problems and persevere in solving them, use appropriate tools strategically, and attend to precision. Uh, and the, the first five there, what do you think they um, have in common? It's pretty obvious, right? But you could probably find a few things. There's a lot of reasoning. There's, and you could argue that the, the bottom three have a lot of reasoning in them, too. I'm not going to say they don't. But, but these are exceptionally strong in the, in the area of reasoning. And um, I just put this, this, uh, this kind of real small, concise definition of reasoning here. Defin reasoning that is based on logical justification of procedures, claims, conjectures, and generalizations. So when, when kids are building ideas and they're, they're, they're using their reasoning, are they justifying them logically? And now you ask what? What does that mean? How do I, how do I see that? How do I measure that? This is a tool that um, I, I co-created with Judith Mos Moskovich and Jack Diekman um, a couple years ago. And um, some teachers have been using it it's essentially these three columns. And the first column is uh, external authority. Basically, well, the teacher did it, so it's OK, right? So there's these levels of justification. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to move kids over uh, into pre-formal reasoning and finally into the formal reasoning column, right? We want them to be um, using strategic examples, counterexamples, and, um, and using the principles of math. This is how math works. We can't just, like in ELA, we can't just say, okay, go search for three pieces of evidence uh, somewhere in the, the, the text. No, they have to be looking for mathematical, this is how math works, right? You cannot divide by zero. This is, uh, why, do I, why do I turn the fraction over when I'm you know, dividing and, and, and then multiply. But why, why do I do that kind of? It's not just because the teacher did it. And it's not just because, well, look at these three examples. They worked. We want them to be in that right-hand column. So I, you guys can, I'm not going to uh, read all this and spend a ton of time on this, but I did want to present, you know, how do we improve the levels of reasoning that kids are using in a, in a really hands-on way? Um, and, um, and I'm sure you, can, you, you would have ways to, to, to um, to modify this, but, but I, I, this, is, this is the kind of reasoning that we're looking for, this justification, the strong justification. Okay, now we're going to look at the authentic communication dimension, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you what that pie chart means in a minute, but authentic communication is using words and other meaning carriers to share information for doing meaningful things, building, creating, changing, deciding, clarifying, negotiating, arguing, that just one person can't do. So even if I'm reading something and I'm getting something out of it, I, I needed that author to write. If I'm listening to someone, of course, I need that person. So I need that other person. And if, and if I really want to construct meaning from it, then it's authentic. If I'm just doing it for points, I can still learn. I'm not saying I'm not going to But I think I'm going to learn better if I'm really into it, right? If I really want to communicate or get communicated to. Does that make sense? Uh, and, it's, and it is challenging in math because we give kids a lot of problems they don't care about, <laughs> right? They don't care about. So it's, it, they, 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 and some of them just think, okay, well, I got to do this because this is school, this is getting points. And what we're trying to do is how do we move that over? There's still going to be a lot of problems they don't technically care about, but how do we make the tasks and even the problems um, more engaging enough to do more of this authentic communication. Because the other side, and I, down here I have reading, writing, listening, speaking, and conversation. Uh, I, I added conversation to that list of, uh, because it's a little different than just listening plus speaking when we're talking to another person. And then on the other side, of course, is using words and other meaning characters to share information to do things for reasons other than using the information in meaningful ways. Getting points, getting praise, showing, learning, uh, winning. Right? And so a lot, of, a lot of times teachers ask questions they know the answers to because we're testing students or, and, 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 and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, or we're trying to get some discussion going. That's okay. But a lot of kids, um, I, I, I remember the story of a researcher 
someone observing a classroom and sitting in the back, and the um, teacher asks a question, and uh, the, girl, the girl turns around to the researcher and says, why doesn't she know the answer? She asked that yesterday. We already answered it. Right? And so she, she was thinking authentically. She wasn't thinking, well, the teacher is trying to test us or, or get some. So we're really looking at how, how do we move. And this is why I put this green part is the pseudo. And there's a lot of pseudo. And this is from my observations in the last couple of years. I'm looking at what are the types of communication that are happening in the classroom. And three quarters of it or more is often pseudo communication. Even a pair share. If you don't want to uh, share your procedure with someone next to you, you're going to do the bare minimum. And if it's just because a teacher's standing over you, that's pseudo communication, right? So how do we increase the? And, and you've all heard of the, of the, you know, how do we get them to say a second sentence that they really want to? How do we get them to to talk more than just the bare minimum, or do more than just the bare minimum? Uh, and I put a fly there. Anyone know why? I get, I've, got, I've gotten 30 different answers for this. So um, usually it's not the, they don't start off with what I'm looking for. So I'll just tell you because it's early morning. Um, I am giving you a little bit of a chance to guess. So it's because a lot of times pseudo communication doesn't bug us and it should bug us. Right? We're never going to be complete. And so that's why I have this. You know, there's always going to be some green here, some pseudo communication, but how do we reduce it? And that's what I was talking about before. How do we get kids to want to communicate, whether it's in a pair share, whether it's in writing, whatever it is, how do we get them to want to communicate? And if we just keep on uh, doing the pseudo stuff and it doesn't bug us, we won't change what we're doing. And I think what's great about the Standards Institute here is, is some of this stuff is bugging us enough to change it. And there's been, a, I, I've heard a lot of great ideas and change, uh, and, and even in the classrooms, that, that is already happening. It's exciting. All right, so authentic communication features, there's three features. The first one is instead of just kids piling up bricks in their brains, we want them to be able to build ideas. An idea is, I have a broad, there's a broad definition of it, you know, it's concepts, um, it could include some of the standards or some rewording of the standard, but it's, it's really a mathematical idea, not just, okay, here is the quick algorithm that I don't understand to solve this problem, right? I don't understand it, I don't care, but I got the right answer, and that's going to help me get my points on my test. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a conceptual understanding, and I've seen that already. So, um, and we do that by clarifying and supporting ideas. There's other ways to do this, but I'm, I'm going to emphasize clarifying and supporting here. Uh, when, we're, when we're with others, if I clarify the idea with another student, and I also support it with the justification, right, the reasoning, um, then I'm building up an idea. So the first feature is purposeful building of ideas. Do, am I giving these kids, this, uh, am I giving the, these, these students math problems? in order for them to build up these conceptual understandings, to build up ideas? Or am I just, and, and do the kids view it that way? I might view it that way, but do the students think, oh, I'm doing these problems in order to build up my mathematical understandings and to, to, to strengthen my reasoning around that? No, what, what are most kids thinking? What? It's just what I do in math. It's, it's, it's my math work, right? And I, I, and I don't want to be you know, negative about that, but you know, it's, you know, in the past, and I think a lot of us were like this as well, we weren't thinking, OK, this problem is going to help me improve my mathematical understanding, conce conceptual understandings. We were thinking, I got to do this thing you know, by the end of the period or by the, <laughs> by the time I go to sleep, and that's it. So um, here's just a couple of ideas. Uh, if you know the radius of a circle, you can figure out its diameter and its area and vice versa. Right? So these, are, these are just some of the ideas that kids can build up. Um, a mathematical model that shows how division works. So imagine a kid saying, OK, this is how division works to another kid. Wouldn't that be nice? Whenever I have two or three variables of distance, time, and speed, I can figure out the third. So that. That goes above the idea of, OK, here's a problem you know, with, with a car going a certain distance, and I, I just got that problem. OK, what's the next problem? Right? It, it, it raises it one level above to the conceptual understanding. And then the, uh, another feature of authentic communication is information gaps, meaning if I know what you know, I don't really need to work very hard to tell you what I know, because I know you already know. 
and vice versa. If you're telling me something I already know, is there a need for language? Not really. And so most of the time when we use language, in fact, you've been using language a ton here, we've been using it because we've been crossing these information gaps. And, and if, if there's something you know, and maybe even right now you're listening and say, I, don't know, I know all this, you're not going to listen as hard. Your brain's not going to work as hard. And same, same with if it's a pair share or share, you know, share something you both know, then you, neither of you are going to work as hard language-wise. But if an information gap, for example, um, let's say four different kids do four different problems and then they share how they solve them with, with one another. I, don't, I didn't do that problem. Okay, so I'm going to listen a little bit better. But if we all did the same problem and then share, often it's just usually one kid sharing and that's it. Okay, yeah, ditto, ditto, or I'll copy from you. Um, similarly, what we're going to do is an information gap activity with these cards that you see on the table. Don't look. They're still a secret. But um, student A has the problem, student B has the information, and you guys have to share the information. And the justification for why you want the information, and I'll get to that in a minute. Finally, if needed, and often it is needed, there is attention to language in service of communication. I underline that because sometimes we do a lot of uh, language work, but it doesn't help the kids communicate. And so we need to do the language stuff, whether it's sentence frames or whatever you do, um, you know, modeling, practice, feedback, whatever it is, it should help kids communicate, not just show that they know academic language or whatever it is, right? We really want them, we don't want them to feel like, okay, I got to do this sentence frame because the teacher wants me to do it. It should be, oh, this sentence frame or whatever it is helps me communicate this idea on, in writing to another person, whatever, and I, and I want to use it because it's, it, it makes it a little easier for me or it sounds better or it's more precise, it's more precise language. So we're really trying to emphasize that. Um, and, you know, if, if you have posters up on the wall, they should be doing this as well. Okay, so uh, this, I'm gonna do this pretty quickly, but I just want to give you an example. Some of you are probably still thinking, okay, what's, a, what's an idea? He keeps talking about these ideas. And um, they, again, I have a broad, there's a kind of a broad scope of what they can be. But they're usually you know, a little bit bigger than just, here's how you solve this particular problem. So conclusions, claims, interpretations, concepts, um, generalizations. So these are all these ideas that can be supported and clarified between students. So to solve for a variable, I do the same on both sides of an equation to isolate it. Uh, pi never changes, and I can use it to find the area of a circle. To figure out the area of a crazy looking shapes, we can break them down into shapes we know. If you need more ones to subtract, you can take 10 from the 10 spot. So notice that these are all higher level ideas that have problems that would support the learning of these. Is that exciting? All right, so, um, and I've been, I've been probably already alluding to this, but the focus should not be just to solve problems and show, or show your work. It should be to explain mathematics, the reasoning, that the mathematics, that the problems are meant to teach. And a key aspect of explanation is using problems as examples and evidence of the mathematical ideas that, that students are explaining. And I'm gonna have you guys do that. Um, you know, taking, okay, this is the idea that I'm building, here's a problem or problems that we've been doing, and this is, this is how the problems work to support this idea, All right? So what to look for? Now this is what, one of the things I want you to walk away with is, is sort of a, a it's kind of a checklist, but it's a, um, it's a way to look at how to improve some of the activities. So the first is a purposeful building of an idea. And, and someone mentioned agency earlier, uh, agency and ownership. So it's a, they build up an idea and they have ownership over that idea. Information gaps, fostering of reasoning, amplify, not simplify. I think we've um, you've done a lot of work on that already attention to language if needed, and then equity. So you're going to look at, at these six things, or look for these six things as you're doing some of the activities, um, in the, which we're going to do right now. OK? Everybody ready? What are the six things? <laughs> what are they? This one? OK, you know, everyone's reading this, right? OK. I got Information gaps, so these are the features, right? Information, and I can do hand motions, right? There's the um, 
fostering of reasoning, amplify, not simplify, simplify. attention to language, if needed, it often is, and then equity. How do, how, do, how do the two activities that we're going to do, how do they do these things? And if you think, oh, it wasn't that strong in one of these or two of these, think, how can I improve it? And this is a really what you've been doing already in this uh, institute. And, and one of the things I'd like, to walk, like you to walk away with is this idea of how do I improve um, each activity so it does these things. So the information gap cards, here's a sample, a really quick sample. but. Um, so uh, the student on the left has this card, right? Emma wants to paint the four walls of a room. She's not sure she has enough money to buy the paint. Does she have enough? Does she have enough? Don't know. We don't have any numbers, right? Here, um, she has the numbers. OK, so she has, you know, it's 12 by 10. What, so she has the data. She doesn't really know what the problem is. So she has the data. She doesn't know what the problem is. So they have to, there's an information gap, obviously. So how do we get the most out of that, rather than just kids saying, OK, I've got to solve this problem. Here's the problem. I'll read it to you. Now give me all the numbers I need. We're really trying to maximize the language and the thinking and the reasoning, right? Uh, here, so and let's see what they do. What specific information do you need? Can you tell me the size of the room and the height of the walls? Now, most kids would just tell her right away, right? Because it, it saves time and it saves your voice. But we want the opposite. We, we, want, we want to get more language out of this. So um, why do you need to know those measurements? <clears throat> <clears throat> I mean, you don't get that a lot from kids. This is a habit we want to build. Is why? You know, and I know we're, we're doing that already, but not a lot of kids. Because if you ask why, that means you've got to listen to someone's explanation. And it's more work. But this is what we want kids to do. We want kids to be excited about you know, the why within mathematics. Look at all that. So look at all that language that came out of her because of that why question. Right? I need to know the area to be painted to figure out the area, uh, need to the length and the height of each wall. Then I multiply them and add each area to the total area. So great, you're getting, you're, she's articulating her thinking and her reasoning for <clears throat> wanting, that, um, wanting those numbers. All right? Here's a, another conversation with the, the two cards. This is about um, the space shuttle chasing after a satellite and then some of the, the, the speeds. Do you know how fast the shuttle is orbiting? Yes, but why do you want to know that? <laughs> little, <laughs> I don't know if they said it just like that, but hopefully they said it nicer. Because uh, I need to know it to figure out how long it takes to catch the satellite. How will knowing the speed help you do that? What kind of question is that? I kind of color coded it. And it's, a, it's a clarify question. Instead of just saying, OK, the, you know, this student B wanted even, even more information. Well, how will knowing the speed help you do that? I want to get, I'm, on, I'm, I'm asking you to dig deeper into this. I'll use it, I'll use it and the satellite speed and the distance. Okay, it's going 16,000, 800 miles per hour. Thanks. How fast is the satellite going? What's she going to ask? Why do you need to know that? Now look at the language that comes from it, right? To know how long it'll take. If it's just a little slower, it'll take longer. I'll make the equation and put them equal to each other because that's where they meet. That makes sense. The satellite's going 16,000. So you didn't push her on that one. Um, that, the, the satellite's going 16,000 miles per hour. Thanks. How far are they apart when the shuttle starts its orbit? Why? Right? I think it ends there. But notice that you know, just from these two simple cards where you split out the, the, the problem from the, the data, you can get a, you know, a pretty decent conversation out of it especially as kids are working on it. This was after, I think, you know, half a year of work. So now it's your turn. The procedure is as, as follows. A, so um, A is, is the white card. And what you're going to do is you're going <clears throat> to read it. You're going to both read your cards, but then A summarizes it or paraphrases it. So, so you have to read it, but you're not going to read it out loud to your partner. You have to understand it. And then B paraphrases it back. So this is what you're saying. So they both have an understanding of the problem. Both of you will have an understanding of the problem. And then, of course, B will have a little bit of an advantage at that point, because B has some of the numbers. Then <clears throat> A can ask B for specific information. You can't just say, what's the answer? right? Before answering, B must prompt A for justification. Why do you need that information? 
even if B knows that already, right? We want to get, we're trying to get some more language out. Now, I know that's a little less authentic because if B already knows, but we're still trying to get more out into the conversation. Justifications. A explains how he or she will, will use the information. B decides if the justification is solid enough. So if, if it's just, well, because I need it, that's not quite solid enough. Mathematically, is it, you know, what does it mean to have a solid, and that's why I put up that, those three columns of justification. Is the justification strong enough um, for getting the information? And then A solves the problem explaining aloud while B asks you know, why at times and helps if needed. So again, still a lot of why coming from B, student B. And then finally, both of you will build up an idea. You'll explain how this problem and its solution methods are examples of one or more mathematical concepts. What is this problem trying to teach you? It's not just to get your points. What's it trying, what are you trying to work on mathematically in this problem? Okay. Sound good? All right. Um, go ahead, grab a card. The person uh, next to you, wh whoever your partner is, should have a different color card, basically. They're riding bikes, and unfortunately, one of them has an accident with a bike. They have to lock it up. I'm trying to figure out how they reach to the same point at the same time if one of them walks for a little while while the other one rides and Okay, so and then Brenda's gonna walk, and and then because. Yeah, Brenda's going to walk and David's going to ride and walk. So our, we're trying to figure out, I need to know how long does David need to ride for them to get home about the same time. Okay. Okay. So, do you want to summarize? Yeah. So, one of them has to leave their bike because they have a little accident. So we're trying to figure out how much time it'll take for them to both arrive at the end place. One is walking and one is riding and walking. Yes. Exactly. And as we're clarifying, is, I know David is riding the bus. Brenda is walking. Brenda is walking with her bike? No. Okay. Excellent question. No. Um, Brenda is not walking with her bike. She changed it up to a tree because okay. her tire Oh, <laughs> so she definitely can't ride. Okay. 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 So, so now you're going to ask us questions to help the data to try to help you solve the problem. Question. Okay, so since they're walking, they're beginning this at the same journey, how far is David's house from the tree? Why do you need to know that information? Huh? Why do you need to know that information? Why do I need to know that information? Because if David and Brenda were locking up their, well, Brenda's bike at the same tree and they're walking home, then I'm assuming the distance is the same, so I need to calculate how much of a distance the two of them are. Are you asking the total distance that Brenda and David would need to travel? They were. Uh, because they're going to the same. Are they going to the same place? It, no, they're both going to their respective homes. Because they're walking home. So yeah, they're they're walking home. They're not going to the same. So what is the total distance that David and Brenda have to go for a ride? How would that information help you solve your problem? <laughs> <laughs> to figure out 
how much each of them are walking, or the distance that each of them have to travel. Or is that going to justify us? Okay. So we do know the distance. Okay. So the distance is 20 kilometers from home. It's okay. where Brenda's bike breaks down. Huh? Okay, Brenda's bike huh? breaks down 20 kilometers from home. Okay, 20 kilometers from home. Is that 20 kilometers from Brenda's home or 20 kilometers from David's home or 20 kilometers from both of their homes? I think we're reading too much into it. I think it just says, it just says from home. Okay, so 20 kilometers. Okay, so the bike is here from 20 kilometers. And that's how. Okay. Um, how, how fast is David? Okay. Oh, okay. It's when Brenda, she has to walk. There's something I didn't understand. Okay, she has to catch up to David's bike. The rate of speed for both. Okay, um, and it says... Yes, because I want him to arrive. Oh, so she's also going to ride his bike a part of the distance as well. So she's walking a portion to get to David's bike. Because they're sharing the bike, apparently. And then she's riding his bike the remainder of the distance. Okay, so then... What was the speed that David or Brenda were riding? Why do you need to know that? <laughs> I need to know the speed so I can calculate the amount of distance that David traveled on the bike. So that I would know the remaining speed and distance or distance that Brenda needed to travel. So I actually don't know the answer. I'm sorry. I'm sure someone here does. I don't remember. I know that's a terrible teacher. I know, but um, I'll, I'll, we'll figure it out later if you want. What I want to know though is what happened conversationally. Did you notice? And, and even though it might not have felt natural to ask why, 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 but did you notice um, either on the receiving end of the why or the producing end, the more language coming out? Just more than what normally happens between kids? I know you guys are talkers and I'm not too worried about you guys. But with, with certain kids that, that, that just, you know, they, they, they don't want to talk as much, the paired setting is a safe way to do that, right? Even if you're asked why a lot, it's like, okay, well, it's just me. I'm not sharing in front of the whole class. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, and I'm going to try to practice sharing my ideas. Did any of you come up with kind of a final idea, number six? Yeah, can I hear? Which? How about language-wise? Did any of you kind of hear some uh, vocabulary or language from your partner that you might borrow or your, your brain might have even borrowed? Right? They had a different way of describing it than, than you thought? That often happens when, 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 when students are, are meeting with each other, they, oh, that's a different way of describing it. And sometimes it's all subconscious. Even this, and what we're gonna do now, the next activity, um, and there'll be some kind of repetition going on, your brain grabs onto language that it understands and it likes in order to, to express ideas. And often you will hear that. And so what we're gonna do in the next activity is, oh, you know, before I forget, I did notice a couple groups, and I want to, this is something I forgot to say before the, the start of this activity. If you don't have the information, what, you don't just sit there silently. <laughs> right? You can ask, why do you need that? And the person will say, but then you can say, and then suddenly it's stuck, you can say, but I do have the speed that Brenda rides the bike. I don't give the number yet. How, how might that help you? So it's kind of, you know, suggesting along the way, a little bit like a teacher would, right? I do have the speed of the bike. How might that help us in a way? So it's really, you know, in, in, instead of getting stuck, because if the person, in, there's going to be kids that don't ask for this, the, the two speeds at all. And suddenly you're stuck. Well, I have these two speeds and I, I want to give them. And so, so, you know, encourage B to do that. If, if, if you get kind of stuck, B can actually give. And, and if you really get stuck, B can say, well, I think you can use the speed for this reason. You know, you're still working together. It's not a gotcha situation. Uh, and this next activity is similar to that. It's not a gotcha situation. 
So, um, so let's go really quick. Was there a purposeful building of idea? Was there information gaps? Did you know what your partner was? Yeah, there was obvious. It was information gap cards. Fostering of reasoning? And maybe it can be stronger. Amplify, not simplify? A lot of you didn't think this was a simple problem, right? <laughs> attention to language if needed. Now, I didn't do a lot of attention to language in this case. And sometimes it takes listening in on groups of students to then work on the language. So it's not always like I can't predict every language um, thing that I want to work on until I observe students. Uh, so be thinking about that. But there might be a few things like, like the why. Sometimes I'll say, oh, you know what? When you're asked why, I'd like you to try to start with because. Start your sentence, you know, start, try to say a sentence that starts with because, and it's a complex sentence. Uh, you know, because I need to find the speed of the, or I need to find out where they stopped, I need the speed. And that's something they could practice. What's nice about it is it's authentic because it's, it's really within a conversation. You might not get it, and you can't like test every single pair, but what's nice about it is you're giving them some language that they don't normally use that's useful in this particular activity. And then finally, equity. You know, was there a potential for, um, for fostering equity in this activity? And I, I, I had a question over here of, uh, well, what about if some, some, you know, just recently arrived to the country? What do you do? And there's some extra things that we do, but at the same time, it's, it's still the content. You're not simplifying. All right, so this last activity that we're going to do is stronger and clearer each time. It's essentially three pair shares in a row. So just be thinking that at, 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 its, at its core. So you prompt for an original response like you give a problem, which I'm going to do. Then you meet with three different partners. Each time you meet, though, if it's just a give one, get one, which a lot of you are familiar with, what do kids do in a give one, get one every time? They say the same thing. Right? Same thing, same thing, same thing. I'm done. You know, if you test me, I wrote down a couple notes on what my partner said. No, this is stronger and clearer. So every time you talk, you need to incorporate what you heard from your previous partner in some way. Even if it's wrong, you can say, well, my previous partner said this, and um, I don't think it's correct because of this, or I, now I'm kind of confused because I have this method, she had that method. That's fine. You're, getting, you're, you're still building something up, right? And then, so it gets stronger with better support, like, for example, justification and examples. And it gets clearer with better language, more precise language. Listeners push for clarification and support and offer ideas. So I'm going to ask you guys, every time you are a listener at the, at the moment, I want you to ask one clarifier support question, meaning one clarifier justification question. So, uh, well, can you tell me why, you know, why you're doing that? Or, uh, you know, what does that mean? What does this word mean? Whatever it is, a clarification and support, and that helps build your idea. All right, here's an example. So the, the problem is Darla decides to buy a sports drink. Her choices are a 20-ounce bottle for $149, a 32-ounce bottle for $249, which is a better value. Explain what you did to get your answer and why. And you could even say explain two ways to get your answer or two methods and, um, and how they compare. Okay, you, you can, that would be your, your prompt. So um, he writes it down. The pre-write is cut into answers each bottle, then add or times. So that's just the pre. Uh, you don't have to do the pre-write, but a lot of uh, teachers highly recommend it. And then a first partner comes along. I think to draw it, then cut up into ounces of each thing. Now, if, if this is only one pair share, that's all you get. But if you uh, allow the other two pair shares, you're going to get more, usually. I think we've got to find like how much ounces for a dollar it is, like one dollar you get, I don't know. <laughs> Take one, now this is the teacher talking. Take one or two word notes, switch partners, remember, stronger and clearer. So they would take a couple, you know, they might take notes on their, on their paper, on their problem. Be watching, because you guys are going to do this. Not this problem, by the way. Um, I want to find out how much, uh, uh, how much a dollar can get, like an ounce. So one dollar is like one over 150, two thirds. So take two thirds of it. So notice how his thinking kind of got going after the first partnership. Partially due to this, like for one dollar, right? And then the second partner says, I kind of did that, but I did it for one ounce, it's cost. 
I did 149 over 20, I think it's like 70 cents, and 32 over no, 249 over 32. I didn't finish it, <laughs> which also happens, right? Take notes, remember to say because to justify your steps. First, I think how much ounces for a dollar, but Alan said to figure out how much ounces for each ounce. So I agree. So I just divided it. So 149 divide 20 into it, it Alan said 70, but I think it's 7. Okay, so actually corrected the, the, the division there. And then um, didn't use because, unfortunately. You ever had that too? Uh, but I think in the writing here, Okay, for now write down what you learned. Start, start with, for this type of problem, you. Notice how the teacher's getting the kids to not just say, okay, this is the answer and how I got it, but for this type of problem, that's the idea building. So for this type of problem, you need to find out how much each ounce is. So I did cost over number of ounces. I got seven for the 20 bottle. So notice the difference between this, of course, and this. And I have, I've had... You know, I don't know how many hundreds of teachers, and they all say, "Yeah, the writing always gets better." And that doesn't mean the thinking and the understanding always gets, but usually it means they're thinking more about it and they're thinking more clearly. And often, is it worth the extra? Look at this and this. Is it worth the extra ten minutes? Most people say yes. You know, to get this orally and this writing for an extra ten minutes, meaning the extra two pair shares, it takes a little longer than one pair share. All right. So this is what you guys are going to do. You guys are going to stand up and get in lines of at least three facing three. Could be four facing four, five facing five, doesn't matter. And be, well, before, we, before you stand up, though, sorry. Um, then I will move one of the lines so you'll trade partners. You guys have done this before plenty of times. You can also do it in groups of four. Um, I just put that there. But look, well, first of all, I'll describe it. It takes Lisa by herself 12 hours to plant trees on an acre of land. It takes Anna eight hours by herself. How long would it take if they worked together? It's a rate problem. Find two solution methods and be able to explain them both to others to help them solve any problem like this. Now, some of you might have the algorithm in your head already. You need to be able to explain that algorithm really well to someone else, not just use it and say, this is the answer, but be able to explain, this is why this algorithm looks this way. I will probably give you the algorithm if I can remember, by the third partnership and have you explain it as well. But I want you to, I want you to think beyond the algorithm right now, you know, which is, for many kids, it's just this is the shortcut. And be able to explain the problem. This is what's going on in the problem. Here are two different ways to solve it. You will probably gain different ways to solve it. The nice thing about the Stronger Clear, I can go into my first partnership with a just total rough draft, an oral rough draft, I call it. I don't, even, I don't even have a clue sometimes. I don't want two kids not having a clue uh, you know, about how to solve it. But, but in terms of most of the time, you can come to, with something. And you start, and then by the time, like, oh, yeah, I got three chances to get this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn from my partners. OK? So I'll be quiet while you guys do a little bit of solving. OK, everybody up? I know you don't, you don't have to finish it. Yes, you just have to have started thinking about it. Everybody up, line up in this, where you see space, find a, find a line, three facing three, four facing four, five facing five. Everyone should be facing someone else. Now look, over, look in the corner over here if it's not covered up. Okay, is everybody ready? Um, now, the, the side that is mostly facing the screen, let's say, most of you kind of decide who you are, um, is A, your group A. Line A. The other people are B if you're facing away. So line A, you're going to start. I'm going to give you about a minute to describe your current solution method. And the other person should ask at least one clarifier support question. Okay, line A, you can begin. Go. You might do So um, I, uh, I really love uh, math. And so I'm a big guess and check guy. So I right away kind of went into half a day. It would take four hours for her and six hours. So the answers would be somewhere around five hours. So I just like to know what my answers are. Okay, okay. So, so then why, I had to figure so out how, how to really do it. How did you decide to, to half it? Well, because I had a half a day, she'd get half an acre. So in four hours, she'd get half the acres. Okay. And in six hours, she'd do half of an acre. So between the two, they're going to have to work more than four hours because she's slower than him. 
Okay. So I just, I just like your estimate, so I know we get the right answer. Okay. But then I thought, okay, I have to really figure out a formula for this. So then I, and I don't know where I'm going with this, but her rate is, she does an eighth of an acre per hour. And her rate is one twelfth of an acre per hour. So somehow, I haven't gotten the equation. That's what I got in my minute parish here. So I'm thinking it'll be something like, you know, one eighth times a plus one twelfth. Well, it's going to have to equal like an acre or something. So I'm not there yet. And then the other thing is, there's going to have to be a substitution down the road. Okay. All right. So now. Yeah. All right. So what I heard you say is that you were trying to find, uh, I like the idea of guesstimating, um, combining the two forces together to figure out what the average would be to actually do the work together. And already thinking about it probably needs to be higher than five hours, given the fact that we have 12 and 8 here. Uh, and then thinking about, you have two different variables. You have your variable for, I think, I think it was Lisa, and then you're available for Anna. Uh, to determine your acreage. I think we left off on like trying to understand why you were trying to find acreage specifically when I think the question was how long would it take if they were to work together? Mm -hmm. So I was curious in terms of why you're trying to find acreage if the problem was asking for to find a solution in terms of working together, how long it would take them. Well, so I think that together they have to do one acre. Right? So I was trying to figure out if they can both do about a half an acre in half of a day. I was trying to figure out if you put it together, it'll take about a half a day for both of them to do one acre. So I don't know. Uh, I, I got stuck at the point of how I'm going to figure out the equation. But I know that there's going to be something Some, having to do fractions variables. of one eighth and one twelfth. So then I just have to figure that into a sentence. Okay, so what I started doing is, I'm trying to remember, I think the conceptual understanding of mathematics is really interesting to me because I, I remember the formulas of which we were trained uh, okay. to think about math, but I'm trying to understand. I would like you to take 10 seconds apiece and tell your partner what idea or ideas you liked that you're going to take with you to the next partnership. I don't so think... Now, no, that is right, because I I, it's going to be less than five because she's faster. Okay. I mean, I, I'm kind of a math guy. Okay. So it's... But yeah, that's right. I don't know how you figured that out. But why, though? So I'm trying that's to understand. So, so like... saying it's A times B over A plus B. Yeah. But so it's just... Yeah, you need to start with a real reason. Right. You just memorize the formula. I did. So why would that be right? Um, so if Lisa's working for 12... Or hours. can plant 12 trees... Or is that? It takes her 12 hours, 12 hours to, to plant. plant the whole lake. Yeah. It takes her eight, eight hours. hours to plant. It's some kind of rate and rate of change. Yeah. And over the combined, so I, that would make sense for that to be the denominator. Person in line A that's closest to me, raise your hand. Now, go down the middle of the line and go to the end of your same line, please. And then shift. Everybody in line A, shift. Person B. Stronger and clearer than before. Try to incorporate what you heard. Person B, share your current idea or ideas. Remember, you're, you're trying to get two methods uh, for solving this. Uh, and uh, go ahead. B, you got a minute. Go. Okay. So in our last conversation, we talked about there's two variables, obviously, to try to figure out how together Lisa and Alma will work together to see how long it takes them to finish the one acreage of planting of trees. Yep. Um, we were discussing the fact that I remember a formula that we were trained and learned when we were kids. Sorry, can I move this? Oh, no, yeah, another Thanks. problem. I'm just gonna put it okay. up here. Okay. <laughs> Not a problem, thank you. Um, and thinking about, uh, I don't even remember the formula's name, but I'm thinking about how it takes Lisa 12 hours to plant the acreage of trees, it takes Anna Alma 8 hours. So I just multiplied them both and then divided them by their combined uh, hours that they would take to do it and then got 4.8 hours, but I don't even know if that's correct or not. So that's kind of what we landed in the last conversation. So I'd love to hear a little bit more in terms of, or clarify questions okay, can from I you. Clarify? Yeah. Why do you multiply on the numerator and add on, like what is, why? Yeah. 
So I, I, I actually couldn't, I couldn't actually explain it. I just, I remember that's what we did, but I'm not sure if it's accurate or not. So what I was trying to figure out is that combined forces, uh, if they are doing the work together, we would then multiply the amount of time it would take them um, to do it. Um, but then adding it, the total amount of time, would be the 12 plus the eight hours, would be 20 hours total. So combined, if they were to do it, it's 20 hours. But if Person A, your turn. Don't forget B. If you're a listener, don't forget your clarifying support questions. Okay? Ready? Go. I'm going to use your language of combined forces, but I found combined forces a different way. Okay. So I found the rate for each person separately. So I know that Lisa works at a rate of one twelfth of an acre per hour and yeah. Anna's at a rate of one eighth per hour. Okay. So if I combine their forces, as you said, I know that um, combined, they would combine work at a rate of 524. So okay. Could you have to find, you know, like the dominator. So how did you find this 524? So uh, one twelfth plus one eighth. Combine okay. their rates will give you change the denominator. Okay. Eight, the denominator 24, and then combine my numerator around the five. So okay. This is five acres in 24 hours. Now that okay. makes me think five acres can be done in a day. Yeah. But I don't think we're there yet. So then I know if that's their combined rate, then if I did it, I can do this a little clearer. But I know that in like five, the first so five twenty-fourths of the acre would be um, planted in one hour. So then that tells me that like 10 24th of the acre is in two hours. 15 24th in three hours. 20, no, five, 10, 15, yeah, 20 24th in, in one four hours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so it'd be 25 in five hours, which is too much. So I know that it's going to be somewhere stop you. between four and five. So I need uh, to figure out 24 24th. How okay, ten seconds a piece. Okay. So now I would take Tell your partner what idea or ideas you're going to incorporate or use. You can even start with, I liked your idea about this, or I'm going to use this in your next partnership. Ready? Ten seconds a piece. Go. What was it? So I think one, I really enjoy the fact that you're using academic vocabulary language, like combining the forces, and thinking about um, like you said, what you call this the rate, right? Yeah. So five acres over 24 hours. Then think it about that in an hour, because it could be very simple to stay here in this world of five acres for 24 hours. But what you're trying to really determine is how long it would. Because why did you want to continue here? What did I want to continue yeah. here? Why or what? Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. Um, I wanted to find out how long it would take to achieve one whole acre. I know one okay. whole acre is 24, 24. So once I yeah. got there, I know that I could look down and see how long it took. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Um. How many of you are more excited to share your idea in the third partnership than you were in the first partnership? A lot of you? Okay. Not everybody is more excited. How many of you feel it's stronger? How many feel your idea is stronger now? You've, got, you've heard from different people. Yeah, you've, you've had a chance to share it. Uh, how about clearer? How many of you think it's clearer? Yeah? Okay. In terms, of, um, in terms of how many of you felt good when someone said, oh, I liked your idea about this. I'm going to use it. That feels good too, right? It's very small. It only takes a couple seconds. But it's, it's, it, so, I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of interactional stuff going on, right, that can help, plus the math, right, that, that helps the math. Um, any other insights that came up? If we had more time, I would give you, and I, f I forgot to put the sentence frames up there, but I would give you, the answer is 4.8. And, and, shh. But the reason I would give you this for the third partnership, you're thinking, what do you mean? It's, I'm done. You, you should give us the answer. It's over. No. In some cases, the right answer is just the beginning, right? I, I like that cliche. But, um, and I gave you the algorithm, and I would say, explain the algorithm. We're almost done. I just wanted to point out shh, that I gave the answer, and I gave the algorithm, but I still want you to explain it. 
So your third partnership could be, oh, this is what I was doing. It was leading me to that, or this wasn't leading me to that, and this is why, and now i got to figure out. So there's, there's quite a bit you can do with these three pair shares. I just want to point out, language-wise and content-wise, okay? And even socio-emotional-wise, you know, socio because kids are interacting face-to-face. -face. Remember, it's eye-to-eye, face-to-face. Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of go to the end. How did the activity work on these? Agency. Building an idea. Now, you were mostly focused on the answer, but I'm going to ask you, even at the end, I'm going to ask you, well, how did this help you um, beyond just this problem? You probably started to figure out, well, this is kind of how rate problems work, right? And there are lots of different kinds of rate problems in the world. Information gap. Did you know what your partner was going to say? No. Was there reasoning going on? Did you ask for reasoning? And did you have to share it? Yeah. Um, was there amplify, not simplify? Was there attention to language if needed? I didn't, I had the sentence frames up there, but. Um, and then finally, you know, the idea of equity. You get to share with multiple, pe multiple kids and hear from multiple kids, okay, multiple, multiple people. So I'm hoping you saw some of this, you know, going on. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, this is kind of the, the final slide here, the, the, the recap before you sit down. But, I'm hoping that you saw these four dimensions and that these are things that can kind of, will, will stick in the rest of your work here and the, and the rest of your work next year. So um, I'm, I'm around for any, any questions. I know this is kind of a quick little um, snippet of, of all that can be done in this area, but I'm, I'm hoping that um, it was helpful. All right, thanks.